Hello, we're Caroline and Pete. We sold up, bought a 60 foot narrowboat and we live aboard and cruise the canal system of the UK. Come aboard and join us for a day in our life. Our day often starts with a beautiful view from our side hatch. Poppy sitting on the top step is our cue that she wants to go out. We have a full size shower on the boat and this is the gulper that sucks the water out of the shower as it sits below the water line. Pete works from the boat and has his office set up on the dinette. While Pete's working I make the bed. I sometimes leave it folded out and sometimes fold it back up out of the way. I clean a little every day and vacuum with our rechargeable Dyson just to keep on top of everything. And today we're having a late breakfast of avocado toast with poached eggs. And everybody's still a little bit tired. Before we set off to cruise, Pete always checks in the engine bay. Just checking the oil level, just make sure we've got oil in the engine still. It's not all miraculously run out while we were parked up or cruising last time. That's all okay. See so just down there, look, is our bilge, which is dry. See the little pump down there, the white thing? It's always dry, fortunately. And he checks the weed hatch to make sure there's nothing around the propeller. We just left Shardlow, heading to get water. So when we head into a water point, I always put a wash on because I know that we can fill up soon. We have a 110 gallon water tank and a gauge to let us know how full it is. While Pete drives the boat, I get the clothes there out to dry the wash in. So we're just approaching the lock. There's uh, two boats waiting already, so there's not space on the lock landing, so we're just going to hold back. But they should be going into the lock together, and then it'll be our turn unless there's somebody else waiting at the top of the lock to come down. We'll see in a bit. Oh, there's the gates opening now, so they can go in now. That's good. Yeah. So we'll just go and wait on the lock landing, wait for them to go up. I'll go with my wind lass and check what's going on, let Pete know if there's anybody waiting to come down. And if there's not, I'll set the lock for us to go in.
I'm gonna go up and see what's going on up at the lock. Okay, so there's two boats in the lock. There doesn't seem to be anybody waiting to come down, so when they're out of the lock, I'll reset it for us to go in there. leaving the lock now nobody waiting to come down so when we've got those gates closed I'll open the paddles and set the lock for us to go into it we've left the boat to help open the lock he just wants to use his windlass he doesn't get to do it very often as you open the paddles it lets the water either in or out of the lock this is a great lock as it's actually got a little bridge to go over so you don't have to walk and balance on the lock gates themselves which is much safer. I'm always a little bit terrified even though I've done it so many times now to balance on those lock gates. So it's quite a big drop down there. When the water level is equal on both sides of the gate you can open them to let the boat in. Close the gates and then go to the other end to open the paddles to let water into the lock. Then open the gates and we're on our way again. We use a Nicholson's guide to plan our route. This shows the locks, bridges, water points and all sorts of things along the way. just approaching the lock and um, there's a bit of a traffic jam going on a lady with the dog just walking past said there's two boats coming down in the lock and then there's four with a fourth one waiting to go up um, so we've just got a little while to wait but that doesn't matter we're on boat time we're in no hurry Locks opened and we've got people coming through so then the next pair will go up and we'll wait. the water point just beyond the lock landed so we'll be stopping there to fill up with water after we've come through the lock. We just held back waiting for this boat to come into the lock and then we moved on to the water point. Hey Mish. I took the dogs for a little walk while Pete sorted out the water. We've got another quarter of the tank to fill, so keep going. It's quite a slow water point left. This water point didn't have any other facilities, so here's some footage from another day of the rubbish disposal and us emptying our toilets. That's always the number one question we get asked, how do we empty our toilet? Often there are combined facilities of water, rubbish and the LSAM point for emptying toilets and we put the cassette back in the toilet in what's affectionately known as the crap cupboard. Filled up with water and 
on our way again. Where now? When we're planning our route, we're always looking to see where the nearest shops are and where we can moor to be able to get to the shops easily. The two old boys can never decide whether they want to be up on top or down below while we're cruising. We've just getting to Swarkston Locks and the people that we shared the last lock with are hanging on, waiting for us. We've been checking the map and knew that this was around the point that we needed to start looking for a mooring spot to go to Aldi. few more emails to answer for Pete. Where are you going? Going to Aldi. Meanwhile, back at the boat, it's time for a cup of tea and some editing. Here's our daughter Sophie, FaceTime her. How many times a day do we FaceTime Sophie? Oh, probably, well, probably like two or three now. Probably, yeah. yeah. We love technology, don't we? <laughs> Having a cup of tea together via FaceTime. She's in Wisconsin. How long did it take you to get there? Uh, 20 minutes or something, I think, probably. Not too, it wasn't too bad. And then the biggest challenge after a shop is fitting everything in the fridge and the cupboards. Pete catches up on a few more emails. 
puts the canopy down and we're ready to move on. So we decided to move on just like a mile or so up the canal just to find somewhere a little bit more scenic. Good job Dave. knots on our helmsman course. Yeah, Pete, this is not from the helmsman Pete course. just makes them up. It's not improvised. But he knows how to undo them. Come on, Hamish, you can do it. Come on, boy. You can do it. Come on, jump. You can do it. Dry food and meat and all their bits and pieces in this top step. It's really a lot of good space there to store everything. Pete works with customers in a lot of different time zones so it's very flexible to be able to work around cruising. While he worked I made a courgette loaf, zucchini loaf in America. Thanks to one of our viewers, Gordon, on Narrowboat Daisy for the courgettes. Now we've got a load of washing up from making a cake but we try to just let everything build up over the day so we only use one bowl of water to do all the washing up at the same time so we save on water. We share the cooking and today was Pete's day. Right. Compliments to the chef. Thank you very much. And Pete often washes while I dry. 
and then it's time for a lovely evening walk to explore our new surroundings. Jump in and try and get it. Is it? Give it to me. Jasper, come on, mate. Let's go. There's a good boy. Come on, then. on you go. And then it's back to the boat to enjoy the rest of the evening. Sorting the washing out, trying the courgette loaf, which was delicious, and catching up on some of our favourite narrow boat vlogs. We took the dogs out for one last time before bed in the rain. Go, go in your bed, then. Come on. Let's go in your bed. And it was the end of another lovely day.